Good morning, YouTube, BookTube. This is Johnny. <clears throat> You're going to have to uh, bear with me. I have a cold I've had since last week. Um, as I said, I think in my last video, I caught this cold from my wife, and I'm, it's still lingering on. But you just keep going. And you get my age. It's like I, uh, I am 67 years old. Now, I always think about that because my wife, her father, died when he was 64. <clears throat> and, um, of course, I, I come across people all the time here in Holland who are in their 70s and 80s and 90s, but... Uh, Every day I wake up thinking, hey, is this, is this it? You know, I have, I have a high an anxiety, anxiety level. Like this morning, I'll give you an example about my anxiety. As you all know, I mentioned in my uh, uh, last couple of videos that my wife, every time, around this time every year, she goes off for a week with her girlfriends that she's known since nursing school. And this morning, uh, I had to, she was gonna be picked up down by the freeway, I-31. I and right by the freeway, there is like a, uh, what do you call a, the um, place, uh, daycare for children where parents drop off their kids as they go to work and the kids like, our daycare. I mean, our two granddaughters, Josie and Cor, are at a daycare because Emily works in Grand Rapids and Caleb works in, in the house in this study. But anyway, the point is, all morning I was thinking, okay, I gotta go drop, Carol get, Carol get dropped off at this daycare center, but then how am I gonna cross the street because it's all this traffic down there you know, people going onto the freeway, getting off the freeway. There's a big, huge industrial complex down there with big semi trucks. And I was just thinking all morning long, well, how am I going to cross the street, get in the right lane to head on home? And I kept thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it, and just dreading it. <laughs> and, of course, when we got there, uh, Carol's friend Faye was there. With her with her vehicle and Carol loaded her suitcase and stuff into the car and I got into our Subaru station wagon and I just got right across. It was no there was no traffic. It was traffic, but there was traffic lights and it was very easy. But I was thinking about it last night and thinking it all morning. You know, just dreading it. So, you know, anxiety, 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 I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I mean, is it something in my genes? It's something that I've inherited? Uh, I don't know if my ch our children experience anxiety or... I don't know. I know that they have their own pressures, you know, just the pressures of everyday life. Working, raising a family, paying the bills, living in this world where we have a uh, Trump as a president could make anybody fearful. But then once again, you have to, as a Christian, you say, well, God is sovereign. God is, is, the ruling, is ruling the heavens and the earth. And he, he is uh, accomplishing his will on this earth. He's gathering his people. He's building his church. And, and he's coming again to establish righteousness and the knowledge of God will cover the earth. So, um, but still, I just suffer anxiety. I wish I didn't. I wish I woke up every morning just feeling, you know, full of peace and full of security. And well, one thing else I wake up every morning thinking about is like, uh, you know, I wake up, I can make a fresh pot of coffee. You know, I can have a nice slice of coffee cake, and I have a, a warm house. Well, right now it's kind of humid outside, 
So we have the air conditioner on, the house is all cool. It's 72 degrees inside the hermit hut. And I'm surrounded by books and I'm writing in my diary. It is October the 1st, 2019. It is 10.40 in the morning on a Tuesday, October the 1st. And I'm thinking, you know, what a wonderful life. <laughs> it's kind of like, it's so wonderful, my present life, that I don't want to let it go. I don't want to die. I don't want to go into eternity because life right now, in spite of the dread and anxiety and the unknown and facing maybe, you know, dementia or cancer or being in a car wreck, I have a really blessed life. The Lord has richly blessed us. And, and I know that I deserve nothing. <laughs> that everything that we have is a is something that we do not deserve anything and, and because, uh, but then i think to myself well no wait a minute here if i'm a christian i'm supposed to be a stranger on this earth i'm supposed to be a pilgrim i'm supposed to be longing for heaven longing for that time when i'll be able to worship the lord without sin and praising God in the choir of the angels and with the, all the saints of the ages around the throne of glory, singing praises to the Lamb, to the Son of God, the King of glory. And I'm thinking, why should I hold on to the things of this earth? So there's always these tensions inside of me that I'm constantly dealing with. Like, I'm always, I wake up every morning thinking eternity, 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 that... You know, there is no, there is no Baskin Robbins ice cream in hell. <laughs> there is no, uh, you know, there is heaven and hell. There's eternity, and um, so everything here on this earth is just passing away. It's just here. You're just here for a moment. It's like I've said many times in these videos how amazed I am how quickly life has gone by. I mean, last night we had our oldest son Caleb and Emily over his wife and Josie joined Cora for dinner because Carol wanted to see the grandchildren before she goes off for a week. And I was thinking, well, you know, it was just yesterday that Caleb was born and now he's grown, he's 38 years old, he's married, he has two children, he lives down the street his wife and him work and they have two wonderful little girls and but it was just yesterday that he was born and 38 years ago he came into this world and where'd those years go I mean I don't know but I was here I'm here primarily to talk about books I did, you know, as I said, I've been kind of sick over the weekend. Monday, I was just really not feeling good at all yesterday. I was exhausted. I was wasted. I was not looking forward to my wife going away for a week. So I was really feeling sick inside about the whole thing. And once my wife is gone, I kind of just accept it. I just kind of go, okay, nothing I can do about it. My wife needs to get away. She needs to be with her friends. She enjoys her friends. I want my wife to have a good time. And I'm okay. The Lord will give me grace. And everything is going to be okay. But before that, so now, I just kind of settle in. I get into this certain kind of, try to just cool it. You know, and I get too freaked out. You know, drink some coffee. Write my diary. I'm on page... 788 this morning for October the 1st, 2019. I put away my September diaries down the lower level this morning. And uh, I haven't been able to read anything in the mornings lately because I've just been feeling so miserable. And But I have, yesterday I volunteered at the library used bookstore, the book nook, and I read Ducks Newburyport by Lucy Elman. I haven't been really reading anything in the mornings. I've just been getting up 
and just feeling sick with this cold. But I have been reading this. And at the book nook yesterday, the library used bookstore, I didn't bring anything home. There was nothing. Nothing to bring home. It was just nothing. I, I have these out this morning because on the first day of a new month, I take photos of my diary and I post them in an online community called Paper Expressions, which is where I post photos of my diaries. <laughs> so I take a picture of the October, you know, I take a picture of the, of the year, I mean, not the year, but of the, of the month. And then already I have one page already written in here. So, you got those already. I take photos of these and then I, I post them. Not only in my paper expressions, but in my Crooked Fingers live journal. I did get uh, in the, in the uh, Jason, who has a book tube, he is, lives on the west coast of Ireland, Jason. He showed this book last week, uh, Obedis, Obed, Obedis Publishers were press. They were the first publishers in Paris who published the writings of, of, of avant-garde writers like uh, like uh, James Joyce, Henry Miller, D.H. Uh, uh, Lawrence, people like that. And I, I'm always curious I like to collect books about publishing and artists and writers and books in Paris, the birth of modernism, and uh, I have a huge Henry Miller collection, and he was one of the first ones to publish Henry Miller. He also, see there's a Tropic of Capricorn he published. Just mentions in here, just the history of this publishing and little biographies of these writers. He, see, they have James Joyce. He publishes early writings. Uh, some of these writers I've never heard of, uh, but I don't know. I bought this used from a used bookstore in Chicago. I got it for a couple of dollars, you know, it was really cheap. And, uh, but, so I got this book in the mail. Like, it's, uh, some of these writers, there's Annas, Annas Neen, who I collect, Dorrance, Lawrence Durrell, Henry Miller. These people I collect, so I want it for my Henry Miller collection, my Annas Neen collection, my Lawrence Durrell. D.H. Lawrence. I collect all those. I have a ton of those books. Talking about James Joyce this morning, uh, I got a, I was going through my James Joyce collection because one thing I've been listening to, and I'll put this link below this video, is I came across last week a reading of Frannig, Fannigan's Wake. I've shown you that... Um, Recently, I got another edition of Fannigan's Wake by James Joyce, and I was on the internet last week, and I came across somebody reading from the first chapter, an, an audio file on YouTube, of reading the first chapter of James Joyce, Fannigan's Wake. So then I went on the search engine, if I could find any other site where Fannigan's Wake was being read out loud. And I came across this site. I can't remember the full title of it, but I'll put it below, where over a period of a year or a couple of years, a musical artists from all over the world took a chapter from Fannigan's Wake and they put it to music, all kinds of music. Uh, you have to listen to it to really know what I'm talking about. 
And so I've been uh, going, I've been reading Fanagan's Wake, listening to those readings put to music, <laughs> which I find very fascinating. So I've been, uh, I've been doing that off and on the last couple of days. I sit down and I find in Fanagan's Wake where they're reading from. And then I listen to it. The, it's all put to music. It's not just uh, someone just reading the chapter, but also behind the voice is some musical composition. It could be, and remember, this, these are artists from all over the world. So you have all kinds of music played in the background. Middle Eastern music, uh, avant-garde, all kinds of music. So I've been listening to that. And when I was downstairs looking at my James Joyce collection, I found I have, just to show you, when I see anything by James Joyce, I, I just buy them. I have another edition of James Joyce, Fanagan's Wake, this one, little paperback. And then I have this edition of Fanagan's Wake, uh, embodying all the author's correct, co Corrections, you see those on the, on the, you can see these on the, uh, on the side here. And then I have a hardback edition of Fagan's Wake. And, uh, by Vikings Press. And then I have this one, with, this is another Viking Press uh, edition of Fagan's Wake. So, if I see any book by James Joyce, his Dubner's Artist as a Young Man, uh, Ulysses, Fanagan's Wake, anything about James Joyce I collect. As you all know, last year, the, our public library went through all their collection and got rid of 15,000 books. And one of the books, they pulled out a lot, of, several James Joyce, uh, like literary studies, biographies, critical essays on James Joyce, Ulysses. This is where I got that book. See, it's from the Hendricks Public District Library. It was with Took Out. And when you look at this, in the back of it, there's an appendix, and that there is an outline of the Finnegan's Wake by chapter. It goes through all of so you can look through this and as you're reading Finnegan's Wake and find a basic summary of what you're reading, an outline. So that's kind of helpful when you're reading Finnegan's Wake. Another good book to read on, this is really an old book that I found at some used book sale. And this is a literary study, it's, one, it's a very famous literary study on James Joyce, A Critical Introduction by Harry Levine. This is a very good book to have. Just a basic introduction, but it's very famous in James Joyce studies. Uh, it's quite, it came out in 1941, but it, it's a classic. It's referred to in here as one of the, a classic study on James Joyce. And uh, it's just a, a critical introduction. So I, it's really great. I was reading it this morning on Finnegan's Wake. But also I mentioned this James Joyce biography by Richard Elman. This is a classic. This is one of my favorite biographies of all time. I haven't read it in almost... I think I first read this when we moved to Holland 28 years ago. But I highly recommend it. I should reread it. When I was digging through my James Joyce collection, I found that biography of Frank Harris that I told you I was looking for. Frank Harris, I think James Joyce knew Frank Harris. He, Harris, he was an Irishman, if I remember correctly. Uh, but I'm not, I can't remember right now. But I showed you his, uh, his, bio, his autobiography, My Life and Loves by Frank Harris. So I found this biography. It's called Frank Harris, 
The Life and Loves of a Scoundrel by Vincent Brom. So, yeah, I can't remember right now if he was English or Irish. My mind just went blank. But I was glad to find this. I was looking and looking for it because I like to have books together in our library. And I got a CD in the mail yesterday by Sun Kin Moon, which is acoustic guitar, ballads, uh, Admiral Fell, Promises. I also got this thrash metal band from Japan, Coffins, Beyond the Circular Demise. They've been around 20 years. I didn't know that, but I came across them on the internet and I wanted some really heavy duty thrash kind of punk death metal. So I got coffins. I took a, I got this out, this new Suntang biography of the Her Life and Work by Benjamin Moser to look at today. So that's what's going on here in my book world, my psychic world, my psychological world, my like I said, also I've been kind of feeling kind of sick of everything. I'm get, I think I mentioned over the years I've been making videos. I get into a kind of, I'm just sick of everything. I'm just kind of like, I suppose kind of depressed. <laughs> I don't know. Everything just kind of gets, gets to me after a while. And uh, so, but you just have to keep going. Like, you know, I've been going on, you know, 67 years. You just pray, you pray for grace, you look to the Lord, and you say, God, you know, I just need you. So that's what I do. So I got my coffee, got cold. I'm by myself for five days. Well, my son's down the street. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to go out for coffee with my friend Tim. As I mentioned, Tim and I, we were kind of hanging out a lot together last year. And then... All of a sudden, we just stopped. We're both loners. We're both loners. And I haven't seen Tim in, oh, six, seven, eight months. But he came into the book nook the last couple of days. Well, last, yesterday, too. And he came in on, what's today? He came in last Friday. And we hadn't really talked in a while. So tomorrow morning, I'm taking him out for coffee, take him out for breakfast, and try to reconnect a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to reconnect to people because I'm kind of just off in my own little world, which is kind of sinful because I'm supposed to be loving my neighbor and loving God and, you know, live, giving a, a life of service, a life of, of expressing a life of good works, you know. And sometimes I think I'm just living my own little sheltered life. I should be out there kind of like willing to lay down my life and be eaten by lions or burned at a cross or sell all my belongings and give to the poor and wander among the homeless under a bridge somewhere in San Francisco. I don't know. But you just pray every day for grace to keep going down the road. So I hope you 